When you were pregnant with Nora, what was your biggest hope? Um, we just wanted to bring her home. Um, that, sorry. That was something we didn't know that we would get to do. We were praying and holding out hope and, and we had agreed we're gonna fight for our daughter. And if, if she's not miserable and if it's not putting her through so much unnecessary pain, like, and we didn't know what that line was. We were just praying that God would show us that line, but we were just like, we're gonna fight for her if it feels like she wants us to fight for her. We didn't fix our nursery up until right before she was here because I thought if she did come home, she deserved a nursery like any other child. Um, but I didn't know if we could um, face the heartache of having an empty nursery. We were told throughout the whole pregnancy that she was not gonna make it. Um, and then the night of the birth, when Katie was sitting there about to go into labor, the doctor came in again and said, you know, probably not, probably gonna be stillborn or it's gonna be uh, pretty immediate. And so as soon as she's born, just hold her. We just wanted to meet her um, and bring her home. And so God has blessed us <laughs> so much more than what we prayed for. What were the signs that Nora wanted you to fight for her? Nora had a personality and then she smiled. You better wake up. You better wake up. <laughs> is that the smile? That is it. The scrunch nose. Yes. Yeah, she likes being tickled too. Yeah. Yeah. But she was blind and she smiled. And I was like, she has joy, you know, like she has happiness and, and that's in, indwelled in her. And, and that's not something that is outside and out of her reach. And um, I don't know, when you see a kid with personality and enjoying themselves, you like you want to feed that. What's the best thing about being Nora's mom? Learning to appreciate um, just simple milestones um, and celebrating everything, celebrating being alive by the minute and by the day. I used to pray that I would get to meet her. Um, that used to be what I always, that was kind of what I always asked for whenever Katie was pregnant, was that I would get to meet her and uh, I don't know, I just think God's been really, really good that I've got to spend three years with her and do things with her and something more than than meat. If she's not stimulated, then she will just go to sleep because I guess it's really dark and, and not a lot going on with being blind and no music to listen to, so she just gets bored and goes to sleep. <laughs> Both her eyes are very underdeveloped, um, but her right eye actually has uh, can receive light. We don't, have, we don't know how much, we don't know what it looks like. It's impossible to tell that, I guess, unless the, per the, the patient can say, hey, this is what I see. But she can definitely see light in that eye. What piece of advice would you give someone like me who wants to form a meaningful bond with Nora, but it's just meeting her for the first time? Um, well, it, she's difficult to bond with, even for us. But things she likes is um, touch and roughhousing and high pitch voices like this so yeah and singing um anything to kind of get her sensory integration going i'm so happy to be here with you nora and i'm gonna sing a song to you because i know you love sensory nora 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 would you say a great way to bond with Nora is to provide those sensory needs for her? Yes, yes. Replace her toys <laughs> with um, being rambunctious and making those noises and making music. And yes, that is exactly it. Nora, 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 Nora. My name's Chris, and I'm so happy to be here with you and hang out and have a good time and make all kinds of goofy sounds. I love being goofy with new friends. Nora, 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 Nora. And I'm having such a good time with you, Nora. If you're willing to kind of just get in the four with her or pick her up and just kind of play with her, she's pretty, she's pretty accepting of anybody. Nora, 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 Nora. is such a fun name to say. Oh, thank you for the kiss. I am so glad you gave me a kiss. I'm so glad we're friends. Nora, 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 Nora,
Nora, Nora, Nora, Nora. I love a dance party. How can you tell if Nora's happy? Um, she smiles. She has one of the best smiles I've ever seen. Um, and when she's super happy, she'll scrunch her little nose up and do a really big grin. Thank you for letting me be goofy. That's how I can tell. You're a good friend. You accept me and all my goofiness. Goofiness, 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 goofiness. Friends, let other friends be goofy. She has grabbed me and pulled me towards her and Nora's kisses are licks. And like, she's licked me. And like, those are like moments where I'm like screaming, Katie, get the phone, like video it, you know, like whatever, cause they're rare. But like, that's her like loving, you know. And that's pretty rare with her. Like that's not typically she's in that mood, but that's kind of her way of communicating. Like, I love you. Like, you know, that's her moment. Thanks for grabbing my hand. It means a lot to me that you're holding my hand, giving me big kisses. That means we're great friends. And I love making friends. What is Nora's diagnosis? Nora has trisomy 13. Um, so like the way I was kind of introduced to it, um, is with the explanation from doctors was like Down syndrome is, is trisomy 21. Um, just that uh, those chromosomal pairs, she has an extra in her uh, in, in that in that chain or whatever in the 13th chromosome. She's gonna have three instead of the two. It's encouraging though that they're willing to take a chance on doing things for Nora um, because in other countries when kids have trisomy 13 they refuse medical intervention because they don't think that it is um, going to help anything. And studies have come out that show that if you do um, perform medical interventions that their quality of life increases and their um, life expectancy also increases. She's objectively the most beautiful girl that's ever lived. Uh, it's not even a question, it's stupid to argue it. Um, and for somebody who was worried when he realized his daughter had a cleft lip uh, before he knew anything else, I miss that cleft lip grin so bad. Like. She is the most beautiful girl that's ever lived. And uh, I don't know, if you, if you disagree, I'll fight you, you know? But like, she's so pretty. Um, and so we haven't talked enough about how pretty she is. She has, a, she has an outfit on right now with embroidered princesses on it, which is like the cutest thing in the world. And she's just, she's just an angel, the prettiest girl in the world. What do you want other children to know about Nora? Um, that she likes to play with toys and likes sunshine and likes to be silly and be tickled um, and that she is more common to them than they probably realize um, and she loves little nursery rhyme songs and she likes to dance and even though she doesn't interact with them like other children would um, she still enjoys things that other kids do Will you always be accepting that this type of interaction, somebody just being goofy with Nora, if you know them and if you trust them, mm -hmm. for them just to engage with her in this way? Yes, um, anything that works for her, I would be happy with. I just, I want her to interact more in the future. That's a goal we have is to be more interactive with people versus toys. Um, but yeah, anything that works. Do you ever wonder what she's thinking? Yes all the time and I wonder if she knows how much everybody loves her um, I don't think she possibly can but uh, I'd like to know if she realizes uh, how much people want to hold her in things boop 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 oh thank you for the kiss you give great kisses to let me know that we're good friends and I appreciate that you're communicating a lot to me, Nora. And we're good friends now. Do you ever wonder what Nora dreams about? Uh, yeah, I have a hope. A lot of times when I'm trying to get Nora to sleep, and I've done this since she was in the NICU, I would always tell her that she was a princess and that she had the longest red hair and that all the other girls wish they had hair like her and that she rode a white horse. And that was how I put her to sleep. I would tell her that story. Uh, while she was going to sleep, so I really hope that's what she dreams about. <laughs> I don't know if it works, but uh, I really, really hope that's what she, that's what she does dream. Yeah. Are you getting mad? How can you tell? <laughs> well, her face is scrunched up and her brows are furrowed. Oh, there's a smile though. <laughs> With a daddy and a little girl, uh, 
it's just so awesome for her to be your princess and just to be her protector and the one that hugs her and makes her feel safe. And uh, I've never experienced that with anybody uh, until Nora. Do you love talking about your daughter? Yes. <laughs> I don't realize it until people start asking me questions. Uh, but yeah, I do. Does Nora have eyes? She does. They are underdeveloped though. Um, and so they're very, very small. And that is one reason, um, or that is the reason that she is blind because they um, didn't form completely. And so she's currently got conformers in her eyes, which are thick, um, kind of like contacts in their glass and you um, put it in her eye socket to help her eyes open um, and that way her school won't be misshapen when her eyes aren't growing at the same rate as her other bones. How close does the toy have to be for her to see the light? That one? Um, I think she likes the vibrations up against her face so I think she likes it closer than it has to be but um, I think about six inches is the max distance she can see. She has taught me and our family so 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 much so I'm very proud to be her mom. When somebody finishes this video and goes on about their day what's the number one thing you hope they remember? There's a lot more hope I think in a lot of situations than we give it and that hope doesn't always feel like Man, I'm so confident this is gonna happen and I'm not scared at all. It's not what hope feels like. Hope feels like courage. Like hope's like I'm in the NICU and I'm terrified, but I'm gonna keep praying and keep hoping and keep holding out for that. And uh, just to have some hope, have some hope. 